Hello again, everybody. This is James Bartley, and you're listening to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Today, our very special guest is Harold Kotz Vela. Harold Kotz Vela has been a pioneer in the, in the research of emerging diseases, designer uh, fabricated diseases. And today, I'm going to have him talk about Morgellons. Uh, Morgellons has been identified for some time now as being this strange kind of chimera type disease that has afflicted unfortunately many people and Harold has done a lot of research into Morgellons so without any further ado Harold welcome to the Cosmic Switchboard show and please uh, share with our listening audience what you know about Morgellons. Morgellons disease actually is a almost natural disease and with disease it's always part of natural biology so it's nothing to be scared of at first place it's a fungal infection and uh, the little fibers that the fungus grows in the body uh, actually have the the very good um, duty to absorb and store toxins especially heavy metals so that part is, the natural part, is rather harmless. And people get infected or get overgrowth of Morganon fibers when they live a bad lifestyle, take drugs, uh, go to the supermarket and said to the bio store or to their own garden to eat food. So it's, it's basically poisoning yourself in self-responsibility. And then you get overgrowth because you're um, heavy metal polluted. The nasty part of these this technology is that at the same time they spray uh, quantum dot dyes, which are heavy metal uh, um, chemicals, heavy, heavy metal containing chemicals that come in three different colors. And they are sprayed over agricultural uh, areas. So they get into the food, they get into the drinking water, accumulate in the human body. And then the fungus does what it is supposed to do. It absorbs heavy metals. And then these dyes and the fungus basically merge to a working transhumanistic technology. Um, the dyes the chemicals, the pure chemicals, pick up microwave radiation, up converted into single emission biophotons that are absorbed by the human DNA. So you have the possibility to insert uh, signals into the body on microwave level, up converted to light, and then uh, you can basically mimic uh, internal communications of the human body introducing things that are actually not part of our consciousness, but that 100% feel like part of our consciousness. So that is one way. And the other way, uh, it works exactly the same. They, these Morgellons pick up uh, um, light communication. So they pick up our consciousness, down convert it to microwave and send it out of the body so that we get a um, traceable, because every human body has its own unique signature. And they can basically read out every single aspect uh, that they also can, can send in. So they can read your emotional status, they can read your thoughts, if they go on blue light. So basically the, the main components are blue light for the mental field and red light for the emotional sexual things. And, and this is what they read and control then. Harold, this strongly suggests that Morgellons, as we know it and understand it, as you've described it, was designed, was created in a lab. Uh, any idea who is behind this, who had created it? Yes, of course people are doing this. Now, now the question is how you look at the who did it. Because the world we live in is divided into nations, into state authorities, general public, uh, press, uh, and then you have these intelligence agency that are meant to be protecting uh, from, from illegitimate excess of other countries, and you've got the military for wars. This is kind of the picture you get from outside, but this is not the real world. This is basically uh, a matrix illusion that is meant to absorb our good intentions and bring them into slots where they're completely useless. 
um, the real setup of the world is completely different. There you have like like uh, a couple of bloodlines uh, that are represented today by certain families that sit on top of the economic hierarchy, on top of the banking system, who basically found their way into politics in 1911 and into economy in 1911 by founding the, the Federal Reserve Board. And uh, politics and science basically was done via Tavistock Institute. In, in, uh, basically, it was founded to kickstart World War I in, in London, half financed by the Crown, so you have one uh, bloodline, and half financed by the Rothschild family, so you have the second dominating bloodline. So they founded Tavistock. Tavistock went to the United States and went to Europe. And everything that we see today is basically Tavistock ch children, all the intelligence communities that are dominant in the United States are uh, Tavistock Foundation developments. All the the scientific programs uh, they run, like MKUltra, is ba basically refining black magic self-torture into a, a, a tool to create super soldiers. So that's Tavistock. The Frankfurt School that is basically trying to refine the knowledge about why the first uh, so socialist revolution in Russia failed and in introducing the 2.0 version of it in Europe as Eurofascism. This is a Tavistock child. Uh, at first play, the, Ch the Chinese revolution, the Russian revolution, this all came out from the same slots. So it's a, it's a multi way targeting of uh, um, the entire society, taking uh, a hold of uh, science via social science, mainly uh, going to the intelligence communities from there, getting access to the military, dominating the military out of the intelligence communities. Um, so this uh, this looks completely non-linear if you look at it from outside, unless you discover the the core of it, which is the black magic tradition of those bloodlines, and behind the black magic tradition, which is the outer appearance, the communication with uh, uh, alien entities that basically kickstarted, ignited, and controlled the black magic tradition. I mean, this is how it started. You had like meteorites scattered all over the planet. And whenever humans approached those stones, uh, they got into t telepathic communication with those stones. And the stones told them, well, I would like to have blood and fire sacrifice and I will give you power over the neighboring tribes. This is how it started or the black magic tradition. So we have an, an invasion, invading consciousness it came down here about 25,500 years ago, and it, it, it pretty much refined its access to the human society by first founding the, the ancient tribe religions. And, and, and then slowly from there, it took over the political system and the military system and the intelligence communities and science. So actually, the entire world, like we see it today, is based on these traditions. And this is where we start from now. So it's about realizing that we listen to the wrong people and uh, getting them off control again. How does Morgellons begin to manifest itself? What are the first signs and the first symptoms of someone who is starting to come down with the affliction? Uh, mainly it comes with skin irritations. Not with all people, but... Uh, um, um, most of the patients show skin irritation, so they start to scratch themselves, and then uh, the open wound shows like blue and red little fibers that look like uh, whatever fibers from the pullover you, you, you had. So if you had a red pullover on, on the open wound, then you might mistake it with a fiber from that. But actually, you see they're a little bit bigger than from, from cloth and, and clothing. Um, and they grow through the skin, come out of the flesh. So this is what most people see first, like skin irritations and fiber growth under the skin. Then you have like little brownish bubbles coming out of the wounds. Like it's, it's there about two millimeters size. 
these are the fruiting bodies when they grow inside the skin. Some people don't show that at all. They have a body that more extracts over the internal surfaces. So there you get fruiting body growth within the intestinal um, area. So they think they have, have some kinds of intestinal parasites because funny forms come out once a month. Very painful. And they are much bigger. They go up to three, four centimeters. And they're, they, they look like little embryos in a way. So it's easy to mistake them with uh, um, um, animal <coughs> forms that are parasitic. But they're not. They're just fungus fruiting bodies. And the thing where you can see how this all connect, connects to the black magic tradition, these f fruiting bodies grow on a secondary morphogenesis. A secondary genetic cluster. You've got the fungus as a normal natural being, and then some types of fungi have the ability to absorb a secondary genetic signature, like uh, take a slime mold that grows in your stomach, you eat broccoli, and then the fungus eats the broccoli, absorbs the DNA, and when it comes to the point where the slime mold forms a fruiting body, he will form something in the form of a bro broccoli plant. This is the natural mechanism. It's completely normal. Uh, we find that this mainly with the slime molds and uh, fungi related to the uh, mycoinsecticide families. There are certain fungi that are used fighting of uh, invasions of uh, insects on plantations. And they do this, they eat like cockroaches and then form fruiting bodies in form of cockroaches. So that's still kind of natural behavior. But what they did was introducing an artificial secondary genetic cluster which is completely lab made. It has like a mixture of 80% human DNA, um, with the Morgellon disease, it's 15% some kind of insect, like spidery or ant-like. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. We don't have genetic analysis on that part. We have it on, on other uh, similar diseases, but, but not with the Morgellons. Nobody did this analysis to know, until now. And then you have like 5% fruit fly, which is the genetics that makes it possible to merge different forms into one being. And the morphogenesis that is generated looks actually like a mixture of spider and human. This is what you see when you pick out the fruiting bodies from your poop. Um, but the, the main thing is not the fruiting body itself, because it's just a, a mushroom. You can digest it and it's completely harmless. The, the interesting part is actually the bioenergetic entity that is growing in these fruiting bodies, because this is actually exactly what we know from the older tradition as the typical um, controlling black magic demons. You've got the, the half human, half spider being with the three head. That's Yabulon, the god of Freemasonry. Uh, and you've got uh, these warm-like creatures that are mainly growing and uh, multiplying within autistic children in their intestines. And this is very simple, either the kundalini and tumu snake from the Asian tradition, lindworm from the European tradition, or if you want so, the snake that was uh, talking to Eve in Garden Eden in our mythology where the entire mess started. So this is when, for the first time, these snake demons uh, convinced humanity or single humans to accept being infested by them. And today it's just part of standard transhumanism to introduce chemicals and vaccinations to basically bring children into such a state that they massively regrow and multiply these snake demons. I mean, the Morgellon has as much co consciousness as other fungus or um, low-level being. They, they do have quite a bit influence on the human psyche, the way they work. This is true. But the, the intelligent consciousness actually comes from the secondary cluster, g goes back to the, to the spider demons, that then after the fruiting body goes off basically attached to the tissue of the human uh, body. And they have pretty intelligent consciousness. 
much more advanced than the human in intelligence, but no heart, no feeling, uh, nothing beyond the mental field. And yes, you can communicate with them. You can sense them. This is the crawling feeling the patients have on their skin and under the skin. This goes through the entire body, crawling through the brain, through the bones, getting everywhere. And when they are full grown, they're like 25 centimeters long. Jeez Louise. And this can get, with Morgellon uh, patients, they mainly deal with the babies. So they're like a breeding station. And the babies leave when they're about two and a half, three centimeters. Then they can basically jump off and try to infest other people in the surrounding. Uh, so, so the Morgellon victims hardly ever deal with uh, um, with the full-grown spiders. With uh, um, autistic people, it's different. Uh, growing snakes, mainly the snakes in them grow quite big and get into the Kundalini position. And uh, because of the continuous communication and interaction these patients have with their demons, they grow quite big. And because the, the, the real human soul is mainly kicked out of the body through the pain the disease is causing, the snakes can take over. I, I really had like I had uh, patients and people in, in seminars who were uh, switching from one to the other. We're kind of a halfway normal, half autistic human going into normal communication. And when it came to topics that might have been a threat to the snake, because we were talking about ways to extract them, expel them, pull them out, then in panic, the snake took over and you had a completely different being sitting at the, at the desk that more looked like a fish that is trying to stay upright on a chair. Because those snakes, they don't have legs and arms, so they have uh, really difficulties to control a human body. So they can make no use of arms, they hang down, but a very nice uh, uh, use of the face and also of uh, speaking. So we had communication in between with a snake, one-to-one. -one. And it really looks funny. It looks like rolling... Chinese eyes and the tongue coming out, like with the snake. Really, it was a really creepy appearance when these things take over. But it's uh, the, the way the way we described it. it, it it's a bit like uh, victimizing humanity, and this is not the case. Uh, whatever happens with this dark realm, they make sure that they don't break any of the spiritual laws. So nothing comes in without acceptance and willingness of you. The only thing they do is they distort our minds in a way that things that are actually bad look good to us. And if it's like about uh, getting information in that things are not as good as we thought it, like going to a normal supermarket and buying, buying food is poisoning yourself. Not a single human that is in his mind would do so, but 90% of the Western population exactly do this. And if they get an alternative, like buy food in a bio shop that is not infested with all these chemicals like glyphosate and pesticides and fungicides and whatever poison they designed, they go, oh, no, that's too expensive. I can't afford, you know, and this is kind of already the snake bubbling in because it's in a good position to give you uh, an idea that is keeping you from going down the road to hell. Yeah, so, so yeah, there is a lot of manipulation in because once the, the entities are in position, they can manipulate your thinking and reasoning, especially on the mental field. They, they will never be able to manipulate the heart. And this is why they get away with it. They wouldn't be allowed on spiritual law to manipulate the heart. Also, it's completely impossible to manipulate the heart because the heart is a, a, a 12 leaf rose. The mental is a two leaf blossom. If you go to, to basically energetic symmetries in process, processing the bioenergy, so the, the mental can always fully be embedded in the heart consciousness. And if we identify with the mental only, 
like being proud to be an intellectual. This would be full identification with your ego and with your thinking abilities. Then you willingly reduce yourself to a binary aspect of yourself, completely rule out the highly developed intelligence of your heart that would, of course, tell you go to a biomarker to, to buy food because the rest is completely poisoned. Nobody doesn't know about this. Yeah? But if, if you identify with this, basically poor aspect of yourself that is completely mental in both senses of the word, word. like mental as crazy and mental as uh, thought-based, uh, then you make an, a decision uh, that is, on, according to spiritual laws, fine enough for them to be able to mess around with your mind. Yeah, so at, at the end of the day, it's always our decision. And if we want to get out of this, like if, if we, somebody realizes, okay, I'm snake infested and maybe I had a circumcision in my youth as a man. So uh, very likely I'm also spider infested because this is where the spiders sit in. This is why they do these rituals of circumcision. Um, then you need to go all the way back and cancel the deal you made. Yeah. With the snakes, it's a bit different because they go in pre-birth, so you don't have a chance. The only thing you do is feeding them by enjoying demonized sexuality, doing tantra yoga yeah, with kundalini practice and all that sorts of shit. Then you feed them, then you are, make yourself responsible for putting them into a powerful position. Also, with the circumcision and spiders, uh, a, a man that had a circumcision in his childhood, per definition and trauma set, is impotent because he doesn't feel anything. The trauma is completely cutting him off his sexual uh, feelings. And then when he grows up and becomes, let's say, 14, 15, 16, 17, according to culture, and wants to have sex for the first time in his life, he realizes, oh, I can't feel myself. I don't get an erection because of that. Oh, I'm a poor guy. I'm to be pitied. I don't want to live anymore. And then the spider jumps in and gives him an erection. And of course, everybody accepts and says, oh, finally, it functions. But it's an it. It's not a me. And this is the sad story. And this is how they make their deals. You actively accepted them in because of the profit you gain at that moment. And this is the case with every single demon that comes into place. If you don't accept the profit, if you don't make the deal, and this can be on a half or non-conscious level without full knowledge, this is what they take. Because they say, if your heart doesn't protest, then I don't fuck up the, the uh, spiritual laws that are valid on this planet. This is how they go. So, so if you, the way out is mainly first taking the step back to trust in your heart consciousness and then trying to locate the entities, isolate them by de-identification and then expel them from your body because one thing they can't stand is love. If they're confronted with a, with a 12 uh, um, leaf symmetry of heart consciousness, they dissolve and before dissolving they go out. So we have all the power needed to go that path back. But it definitely, for most of the people, includes some very inconvenient truth and realizations about deals that they made. So, Harold, essentially what these entities do, these intelligences working through the Morgellons, is to simulate the human thought processes, uh, hijack thought processes, get everybody into their mental headspace instead of their heart space. Is that correct? Yeah, this is why it's done. Exactly this is the reason to make make it more tempting and more likely to fall for the non-real McCoy, which is like, like identifying heart with emotion. This is what it does. If you ask people... Uh, what what does it mean to be heart-based? Everybody would say, oh, being emotional. No, that's not it. We don't even know anymore what heart-based consciousness is because it's not there anymore. 
for the majority of uh, uh, humanity, yes, they can get emotional, but they are not aware anymore that they have a heart. The only thing that goes through is like uh, conscience. If 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 you have this slight feeling, oh, what I do feels wrong. It's a very low voice inside yourself that tells you what is right and what is wrong. This is the only thing left over from heart consciousness. And and the the number of people I know who have a developed heart, um, it's sad how few are there. And everybody else is mistaking heart with emotion. So if they get horny, they think they love. How stupid. No, if you get horny, you get horny. And that's it. And this is demonized sexuality. Because normally, if you don't have heart consciousness, you can't love. And if in real nature you do not love, then horniness doesn't even appear. Unless you have a demon in control of your sexual organs. And it's really messed up. So many of the weapon systems utilized against the public today are interconnected with other weapon systems, not just binary or tertiary, but it, it seems at times that two or more components come together, including uh, radiation, electromagnetic waves, frequencies, etc. Would you like to comment on that? Um, the, the Morgellon technology itself mainly acts on microwave. So this would be uh, the pulsing of the signals of the cell phone towers. You know, the, the program, the, the, the uh, speech that is transferred, the carrier frequencies are extremely high on microwave, but uh, controlling emotions in a, in a body is very low frequent. It's like Moore's alphabet. So you go beep, 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 beep. This is what you see when you watch the glowing of Morgellon uh, uh, structure, when you see the um, quantum dot liquids turn microwave into vi visible light. What you see is red and blue pulsed lightning. So this is an extremely low frequency, and it's, it's no problem to embed these low frequent pulsing beep patterns into the transfer of any sort of microwave based uh, communication like wireless LAN, whatever. So all they need is access to the uh, wireless LAN router, and then they can cut their packages of data into the right length and send it to, to your computer. And the funny thing is, if you know, the, the wireless LAN routers, they do have phase array antennas. Uh, if you ask a technician what this is this for, he says, well, we want to reduce the amount of radiation. So we build in an antenna that without moving parts can focus the signal directly on the point where the computer stands in the room. We detect basically the position of the signal coming back from the computer. And then the phase area antenna is reprogramming itself automatically to send the signal exactly onto the position where the computer mainly stands. So it has a kind of memory function inside. So if the computer is five times on the desktop and the ones on the sofa, it will refocus on the desktop. Now, if you go into any hotel room of this world or any private flat with a, a detection device for, for microwave, you will find the focus of the face area antenna not on the computers, but on the heads of the people using them. The, the main position is exactly above the chair in front of the desk. It's at the end of the bed, at the head end of the bed where the human is sleeping. There you always have a, a hot spot of uh, uh, um, wireless LAN. And this is because the... Um, basically the second component of transhumanistic technologies that are implemented. Uh, they managed to basically grow an artificial nervous network in our brains. The average is about 2.3% in Europe of artificial nerves growing in the human brain. Uh, the way they do it, and I'll just finish that, that first part. So your brain is emitting microwave. And the, the, uh, the router 
the face area antenna is detecting the microwaves uh, emitted by your brain and focusing its antennas on your head. So this is every everyone who has a, a even stupid device for microwave uh, detection can check this in his own arm. It's it's ridiculous. And the 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 reason why they can uh, why why we have a, a microwave signal being emitted from our head is a combination of a number of toxins. Uh, that basically lead to the assembly of something they call neuronal nanobots. What they do is you, you need mercury to strip your nervous system from the tubuli in the protective layer. Then the biochemistry inside the nerve is exposed to the interstitial liquids. Then you need organophosphates. This is coming from uh, either pesticides or uh, taking flights too often because the organophosphates are in the lubrication oil of the turbines. And this is where they get the cabin air from. And if the turbines are a bit older in the plane, then you get vapors of that lubrication oil getting into the air that is pressed into the cabin by the bypass. Uh, air supply. So flying too often gives you a shitload of uh, um, organophosphates and they um, chelate copper. So they pull copper from the body. So they, they basically strip your interstitial liquids from copper. And then the nerve itself, like the core unit that is leading the signal, it's built out of protein prion copper, protein prion copper chains. So it's dissolving the copper from those chains. So they dissemble so that you get just protein prion chain links that go all over your system because the tubulin is not keeping them in place anymore. Uh, so basically this dissolves your nerves. And then the body says, oh, I can't think anymore. I need to regrow my nervous systems. Uh, but there's no copper available to fix the problem because of the organophosphate have completely uh, pulled it out of the system. So they jump back to the a little bit less good alternatives to copper to build nerves. And this is iron, barium, and strontium, which is available in abundance from the leftovers of geoengineering or of military spraying activities. Uh, so the body regrows a nervous tissue that is based on uh, protein, prion, barium, for example. Um, this does function for the human part. It does process data in your brain, but it also is vulnerable to external electromagnetic radiation. So it does emit and receive like an antenna because it's ferromagnetic. Barium is ferromagnetic, copper is not, so copper doesn't pick up external electromagnetic. This is where all the electrosensitivity comes from. And then these nerves grow and grow and grow and start to come into positions to, to build new neuro neuronal knots. And they build it around the piezo crystals for military spraying. This is barium strontium titanate. It has the barium atoms on the surface, so it very nicely connects to the barium chain links within the nerves, and then you grow like a new center of a neuronal knot with a ferromagnetic nervous system reconnecting to the human part of the brain. So this is growing kind of a full secondary brain within your human brain that actually is at first place emitting radiation and receiving radiation, but also is programmable by the piezo crystals that also accept uh, acoustic uh, signals to emit electricity. And you know, if you kind of give a pulse of electricity into a nerve, then um, you, you kickstart chain reactions in the nervous system. This is what we call mad cow disease. This is when they tested the system to find the right measure and amount of chemicals to, to spray and distribute 
so that it turns into a technology and not into a disease. So they overdid it back then in 86 in Great Britain. And kill had to kill millions of cows because uh, they overgrew that technology. This is if you had a, had a mad cow disease cow and you gave her a clap on her butt, she was collapsing in neuroleptic uh, motion patterns because of these... Uh, um, um, chain reactions in the nervous system didn't stop anymore. And it's all about neuronal nanobots. And this is how they got that part of the technology into our body. And the main thing is, again, supermarket food with pesticides loaded with organophosphates and flying. Unless you take a 787. There you have at least the... Um, pressure done with an external compressor and not taken from the bypass of the turbines. So if you fly, you have to take a very expensive flight on a 787 to not get this in. And it's part of the toxic air syndrome. People, um, I mean, also the, the nanoparticles, the piezo crystals are part of the toxic air syndrome. Uh, the ones who realize that stewardesses and pilots get sick after a couple of years, they're just connected to the organophosphates, but not to the piezo crystals, although it's an integrated mechanism. You need like three components to get one disease. How do you see this trending? Where do you see humanity 5, 10, 15 years down the track if this widespread Morgellons attack continues unabated and is not stopped, uh, where will humanity end up? We don't need to ask what would it be. Just look at the actual state. We're already, already there. Once you cleared your mind and cleared your ability to be empathic with other people, you can read their minds, you can read their emotions if you want. Although it's not polite, nobody would do that because it's invading privacy. But of course, I, I, I had my testing phase when I, I trained new abilities, uh, maybe violated a bit of privacy. But the state of humanity is already as messy as it can get. Of course, it always can get worse. But go to, to a normal supermarket where you make sure that you meet the people who eat that crap. They are overweight. They're completely distorted faces and distorted body language. Uh, they're completely caught in mental loops in their brain, like like uh, not connecting at all to their emotions and not connecting at all to their heart. Heart got lost first. Uh, emo losing emotionality was kind of a second step. And they move like robots. Yeah, you take you take a piece of whatever, go to the cashier, want to pay it. You know the price. The price is non not on it. And the lady in the supermarket tells you, no, I'm not allowed to believe you that it's $3.99. Yeah, of course I believe you, but I, I, it cannot be done like this. It is like different. It is differently. We have to, it's completely, the entire society got completely robotic and acts like a, like a mountain of, of, um, uh, mechanical parts that fit together to create hierarchies, mainly hierarchies, to create uh, informational patterns, and everybody is just functioning. Yeah, I just uh, take a mercenary. Oh, I just killed 200 people. Oh, it was a job. Oh, oh. Look at Hollywood, what they are propagating. Yeah, this is where it goes to, and this would never ever be possible with a natural human, because he would he would start laughing after two seconds and say, "What weird film is this?" When I go to the city, I feel like like being dropped on a completely messed up alien planet, and this does not relate to me in any sort. I remember I've been like this, yes, so it does relate in a way. But but uh, this is not funny. This is uh, this is sad only. And yeah, this is the state we got into. And if there's a heart left to listen, just please turn around and go back to where you've been first to recover, and then you can take maybe the lesson of 
what did it mean to fall so deep, to really get some spiritual growth that uh, will lead to a new type of humanity that is more advanced than we were before this adventure started. But the thing itself at the moment is completely lost and completely sad. And most of the people don't even have the awareness of the problems to even start with clearing this mess up. Just feeling something is all is, is already a big thing for them. But when it gets unpleasant, uh, they will all immediately stop feeling because it's unpleasant. What bullshit? Pain and healing is one and the same. Pain is directing life force to an injured part of your body, spirit, or mental field to heal it. If you don't go through pain, there's no healing. But people go like, oh, like, no, oh, this is not convenient. Huh? Yeah. This is where we are. Sad to accept it, but necessary to accept it. If someone is unfortunate enough to find themselves uh, afflicted with Morgellons, what are the things they can do to hopefully one day divest themselves of this affliction? Uh, where does someone start? Actually, diet is everything. Diet is enough. Uh, sometimes uh, your health condition gets stuck in bad loopings. So uh, there are very few things that sometimes are needed to reverse the condition. For example, you have one of the loops that are um, found in Morgellons disease is candida growth. And candida is producing uh, some chemical substances that traumatize continuously the liver and keep the liver in a state where the function is shut down. So the liver can't detox. So you over acidify and uh, uh, intoxify with the heavy metals, which is ideal for candida growth. So you get even more candida. And then the more candida even gets more chemicals to shut down the liver even more. And it's, it's a vicious cycle that doesn't disappear just because of a healthy diet. So this, these things sometimes need a, a more uh, medical approach. And to fix it, we, we developed one remedy. At the moment, it's, uh, it's traded as Super Zeolite by Biopure.eu. It's a, a radionic remedy that was meant to um, um, basically relieve the liver from its traumatic state, to break this vicious cycle, to kickstart detoxing activity again, so you start to lose acids within the first days and uh, start to expel heavy metals from your system. So this is kind of just breaking the vicious cycles, and there are a few of them. Some are in the, in the intestinal environment. If, you're, if you've got a leaky gut or if your gut bacteria are completely messed up, um, this is basically how you clear your system in any case. You start from the intestinal environment, then you go to liver, blood, lymphatic fluids. Second environment, then you go to, to the interstitial liquids. So this is mainly about excellent water quality to heal this. And then you can target the intracellular environment. So you, you clean the house from bottom up, because if you start at the, at the top stories, you, you mobilize lots of toxins, but they go, can't go out because they have to cross all the other environments to be expelled by the intestines. And if the rest is also polluted, the basic uh, transport functions are shut down. This is what the body does if you have an, an, an overload of chemicals that are not supposed to be there. They shut down the transport capacities to keep the problem local. And then the entire system is frozen like in a shock. So if you want to de-shock and defreeze your system, the best way is start with colon cleansing, then go to liver cleansing. And there's many, many possible ways to do so. Like Andreas Moritz um, has many, many, many excellent uh, protocols for organ cleansing, liver, kidneys, everything. You can look up his books. Um, colon cleansing are 
hundreds of ways of colon cleansing. Uh, the main thing is, do you love yourself enough to go into research what to do and start practicing and co collecting your own experience with your own body, how it works best to detox? Uh, it's not the av availability of method, it's uh, the question whether you decide to do so or whether you decide to continue with a normal life because it's more convenient or your neighbors don't look at you in a strange way when you do funny things like colon cleansing or, or liver cleansing Ooh, or you don't feel convenient with uh, the inside that you're poisoned. Yeah, because the moment you realize I'm poisoned, your consciousness is focusing the non-convenient parts of your existence. But if you don't go through that, nothing moves at all. So everybody needs to make his own decisions. We're getting into that area where we're talking about humans as automatons, uh, that they're just programmed to carry out certain very basic functions and are barely smart enough to survive, uh, some would argue that, you know, people operate mostly in the subconscious realm, but you're pointing out that the subconscious actually is part of this malign manipulation, part of this program. Would you like to elaborate on that? Actually, we, we, we might look at a 25,000 year old history of um, um, engineering our race. And uh, the funny thing about if you understand the mechanisms is that all the tricks they played on us always came by the same pattern. It's like create a problem and offer a solution. And then humanity picks the solution and feels like, who finally, we did it, we managed it, we found a way out of this mess, not realizing that the solutions actually contained already the poison for the next problem. So it's, it's a down spiral that uh, we are sitting on in pride, because everything we remember is, oh, we found a solution for this, we found a solution for that. Um, and by, by going down this spiral today, I would say, like, like uh, um, if, you, if you spot something like a day consciousness of a human, like all the parts he's identified with as a day consciousness, this is already 90% non-human. This is already 90% bio-robot from our ancient history. It's not even the, the, the modern path of uh, biotechnology, transhumanism, it's just completing um, the takeover on a biological or biomechanical level. Uh, the, the social engineering applied on our souls is already fully completed. And this is the th thing that started with the black goo 25,000 years ago. And we can go into the single steps of this development um, to see what was manufactured in what way and uh, with what results today that is, yeah, that managed to turn us into a species that believes it has a subconsciousness as a natural state. This is so funny. If you look back to, to the original state, we were fully conscious beings. But, but by me, by being messed around with, uh, we, we, we got so, so distorted and traumatized that we, we lost so many aspects of ourselves that we believe to have a natural subconsciousness. If you go through all the healing, uh, you lose that. You get completely fully conscious. There's nothing in the hidden. You're fully aware of your entire spirit and soul and emotional body and mental field in the correct hierarchy. And there's no subconsciousness left. It doesn't exist in nature. Okay? So we can, we can, for the second hour, go down that path, um, how it started, which steps they took, to turn us into what we are now today. And this is an eye-opener. So. 
Harold, can you tell our listeners where they can find your work online? For the medical research, kind of the scientific papers I published just privately, not in newspapers, it's uh, aquarius-technologies.de. And then I set up a um, general information website for the medical issues, like more for general public, uh, less scientific. That's uh, the timeloopsolution.com. That was kind of the working group we built when we worked on the Morgellons disease. So it's a bit Morgellon focused, but also takes on some of the other topics for general information. Well, we've reached the end of the first segment of our interview with Harold Kotz Vela, and it's been profoundly interesting as well as somewhat adventurous <laughs> due to all the interference that Harold and I received at both ends, I might add, during the recording of this podcast. Uh, for our dear listeners out there, if you like what we do, if you believe in what we do, please go to the CosmicSwitchboard.com, sign up and become a member, and we'll see you at the top of the next segment.